Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's panel discussion. I'm Melissa Randall, Corporate Communications Manager at Fallon Health, and I'll be your moderator today as we talk about this important topic, the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, as this vaccine rollout takes place, many of you may be asking yourself, how do I get the shot when it's my turn? Well, it is a great question, and we have brought together a distinguished panel of experts to really help guide us in this process. Let me introduce you now in no particular order. We have Dr. David Brumley. He's the VP of Medical Affairs for Fallon Health. Hello to you. Morning, Melissa. Dr. Michael Hirsch, Medical Director for the City of Worcester Public Health. Hello. Good morning, Melissa. Thanks for having me. Of course. Dr. Pablo Hernandez, Chief Medical Officer of the Edward M. Kennedy Community Health Center. Hello. Hi, good morning. Good morning. And Dr. Ben Berner, Senior Director of Pharmacy for Fallon. Hello to you. Good morning. All right. Well, thank you all so much for being here with us. There is a lot to discuss, so I say we dive right in. Agree? All right. Let's do it. Dr. Hirsch, let's start with you. You know, the COVID-19 vaccine, it is here, okay? It is available, which in itself is quite remarkable. I think we can all agree. Would you call this a pivotal moment in the pandemic response? Absolutely. Uh, all of us have been through a pretty uh, horrific uh, 11, 12 months dealing uh, with a defensive posture against the pandemic. And now we finally have an offensive weapon we can use to try to get us the herd immunity that will get us back to some semblance of uh, a new normal that I think will remind us all of 2019 and not so much of the awful year of 2020. Yeah, a lot of people talk about this quote unquote new normal and the future and any return to whatever that new normal is will greatly depend on, you know, how quickly people can get vaccinated and, you know, making sure that they have the knowledge and know how to make that decision. Dr. Hernandez, you know, the big question out there is, is it safe? Can you tell me it's safe? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the vaccine is safe. And I think the policy, like Dr. Herger mentioned, of getting that herd immunity, uh, we're talking about about 80% of the population to get the vaccine uh, is going to be safer for all of us. 80% is going to take a lot of us coming together, though, would you say? Absolutely. And it's going to take a few more months. So even though there is a light at the end of the tunnel, uh, there is still a few more months ahead of us that we need to keep working as a team all together to get there. And you know, Dr. Hirsch, I, I look to you, you know, people are saying, okay, I've made the decision, I'm going to get this vaccine. How do I know, you know, when it's my turn? There's a lot of kind of this question about phases and subphases and different approaches. So what's the sense of priority here? Well, I think the CDC really established a, a pretty good prioritization scheme where they decided to uh, emphasize in their first phase, first responders, people that were really COVID facing, as they call it, people that were exposed and at highest risk for exposure. And also if they went down with COVID illness, that it would really affect our ability to take care of others. Uh, the second phase is a huge problem or uh, a challenge, let's say that, because it involves seniors, it involves people with uh, medical comorbidities, it involves essential workers, it involves school personnel, which we all want to see get better so that they can go feel better about in-person learning, which is such a big thing. It involves vulnerable populations that have a sense of hesitance about the vaccine. So that's a grab bag that is huge. And supposedly we're starting that phase two in February. So maybe then Dr. Brumley, in the meantime, while people are trying to, you know, wait for it to be available to them, they should be doing their homework to try to figure out which phase they fall in. How do you, how do you know, and who's maybe the best person or people to talk to, to figure out where you fit into that puzzle? The best source really is the website that the state has put together. Um, mass.gov, if you just, uh, it's mass.gov slash COVID-19 vaccine. So that will be, you know, regularly updated. It goes through who's eligible, how you find out. It goes through the, the registration process, how, how you can, you know, get connected um, to the sites that are giving the vaccines. 
Um, there are some challenges there, obviously. It's a website, so people that have challenges with computers or internet, um, you know, there's the state's figuring out how to support that and, and develop it. And we at Fallon as well are looking at some outreach things that we could do for our members to help to coordinate that. So that's that's in development and we're working closely with the state and um, our providers to facilitate that. Dr. Barner, I look to you, Pfizer, Moderna, what's the difference? Do I get to choose? Kind of what's going on in that realm? Right, so um, with the two current vaccines available, Moderna and Pfizer, um, up front, it's relatively unlikely that you'll be able to choose between the vaccines. Um, but that's okay. Uh, the data that's been released for both of them have shown very similar efficacy, you know, up to 95%, and, and also a very similar side effect profile. Um, and then finally, they also leverage the mRNA technology um, that's, that's very new for a vaccine this wide, but has also helped build and make this vaccine so effective. So I think everyone should feel very confident um, that the vaccine you're getting, whether it's whichever one, is the most effective one available on the market. And we do know, and we've heard, you know, repeatedly in the news that it takes the two doses. So maybe Dr. Hernandez, can you weigh in on, on why the two doses and, and the weight in between? We need two doses. So the first one with this technology um, expose the body to the antigens, which is the pieces on the virus that will trigger that immune response to get rid of it. Uh, so that's the first exposure, but you need a second one to really have the full blown response. So that's why it's important to have two doses and an interval in between those two. Thank you. So Dr. Barner then, is it very important to make sure you schedule your appointment and stick to that second one? Because you don't want to miss one here, right? Right, so it, it is very important. And you know, certain sites will, will allow you to schedule both your appointments at the same time. Um, so you'll wanna coordinate um, in the beginning, um, you know, trying to book your appointment as early as possible in, in the phase that you're eligible for will really make the process smoother for yourself, but also the providers, because we need to coordinate a limited vaccine supply um, and also limited resources to administer the vaccine. So that is a, a critical part to this. Um, in addition with the vaccines, um, after you receive the first dose, you know, it's recommended, I believe with Pfizer, uh, to have it about 21 days after the first dose. Moderna is about 28 days, um, but you can go longer. You, you don't wanna go too long though. Um, the current CDC recommendation that I think just came out um, has said you can wait up to six weeks, um, which gives us more time to coordinate with all these resources. Um, now the question may be, what do you do if you go after six weeks? Well, obviously the recommendation would be not to, um, but currently there's no recommendations on redoing the vaccine schedule or, or taking a third dose. Um, but that is something you'd want to talk with your primary care physician about if you were to exceed the six weeks. You read my mind. Thank you for clarifying that. And Dr. Brumley, we're hearing now too about this mutation. Are, are these vaccines, the ones that are out there right now, are, are they working against this? Are they resistant to? That's, that's an excellent question. You know, we keep, we're seeing more and more evidence of uh, mutations in various countries, Brazil and the UK in particular. Um, so as far as we know, so far they, they are effective. You know, it's early in the game, so we'll have to watch that very closely. One of the advantages to the technology though, is that the uh, vaccines can be modified relatively quickly compared to previous types of vaccines. So that if we do find an issue, I think you know the pharmaceutical companies should be able to address that relatively quickly. There's some discussion about, do you need a third booster? So that's just in the in the, uh, consideration phase. So there's certainly no recommendation to get a third one, but those are a couple of possibilities if we do run into issues with the mutations. I'm seeing a lot of head nodding. It looks like you, your fellow panelists are in agreement with you there. Thank you. All right, so Dr. Hirsch, my last question for everybody, you know, we've made this decision, we got the shot. Am I now immune? What's kind of going on here in terms of, do I need to keep wearing a mask or, or what's the new normal look like once you're vaccinated? Great question, Melissa, because I think people can't uh, assume that uh, they're scot-free once they get the two doses. First of all, it takes about 
three to six weeks, we think, to get that full immunity after the second dose. And second of all, we don't know yet whether people that have been dosed uh, will not be able to spread the virus. They may not get sick from it themselves, but they might be able to carry the virus. So it's very important, I think, those three W's that everybody's so sick and tired of everyone talking about, watching your distance, washing your hands, and most importantly, wearing your mask, um, I think is gonna go on for a while until we have some confidence about the level of herd immunity and the answer to the question, are, are people that are vaccinated spreaders? We won't know that for a while. Uh, so I think we, the new normal is still gonna be wet mask wearing for sure. And the other Ws might be able to be relaxed a little bit uh, once we're more confident about the number of folks that have been vaccinated. All right, well, I think that's a great place to stop. I would like to offer you each final thoughts. Dr. Hernandez, let's start with you. As a personal piece, I was hesitant myself of, you know, what is this mRNA vaccine technology, this new, should I use it? Should I give it to my kid? And the answer is, it is new, but it's not that new. Uh, this is the third coronavirus that we are confronting uh, before we had SARS and before we had, and after that we have the, uh, the Middle East uh, um, variant, uh, which was very lethal. And for that one in particular, the vaccine was almost ready to be uh, out in the market. However, because it was so lethal, it, was, it didn't expand in a pandemic or epidemic form. And so all the research stopped a few years ago. But this has been in the making for over 10 years. Uh, and that put me at ease and talking with friends that this is a proven technology. Uh, it is novel, but it was ready we were lucky uh, that it was ready to just take a year or less to get it going. I think uh, my, my final words, I would just say, you know, I'd, I'd ask everyone just to be patient. You know, we're, we're still in the, the winter months. Um, there, there still is a widespread of COVID, but we, we do have a lot to look forward to. And we just have to be patient as we work through these phases and make sure that we're taking care of those within our community that most critically need um, the vaccine early on. So I'm very excited, you know, in the upcoming months of what's to come. Clearly the vaccines are safe and effective. The technology is amazing. Uh, but public health people have a saying that vaccines don't save lives, vaccinations do. So no matter how many vaccines are available, they have to get in people's arms. So I would just encourage people, you know, be persistent, you know, go on the website when it's your turn, keep clicking, keep trying to find that appointment. You know, it'll, the state will improve the website. There'll be other resources coming along, but I think again, uh, be patient and keep trying. Where we've gotten to now is because despite all of the confusion and a lot of uh, ignorance about the virus and, and, and how it was gonna spread and what was gonna happen. Uh, the community uh, here in central Massachusetts really pulled together. It was a, a municipal thing, it was a medical thing, it was a uh, public health thing. And the community itself, the people of the community rose up and they supported our first responders and they report, supported our medical centers and our community health centers and I think we're, that's how we're going to win. We, we, we can't take the public out of public health. And uh, the public has really stepped up. And I think they're going to listen to messages like we have heard today from these great commentators on our panel. And I'm, I'm, I'm confident that they're going to take it to heart and do the right thing. And we'll get through this. Very well said. Well, thank you all so much. You have given us so much to think about. We really appreciate your time and expertise this morning. For Dr. Hernandez, Dr. Barner, Dr. Brumley, and Dr. Hirsch, I'm Melissa Randall. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great day.